Weight loss drugs skyrocketed in popularity this year. Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk are up more than 50% year to date. Our next guest says weight loss drugs will likely continue to dominate the discussion within healthcare as companies like Roche and AstraZeneca will get into the race. Joining us now with more is Emily Field, Barclays Head of European Pharmaceutical Research. Uh, Emily, is there anything that you see that could slow this train down? Um, good morning. I mean, I think what we're most watching closely on our side is really supply, just because both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, the demand has just been so unprecedented for these drugs that really we think sort of how sales evolve in 2024 is going to be dictated by just how quickly can they make these drugs? They're trying to ramp as quickly as they can, but we think that that's really what people are going to be watching is just how much can they produce to meet this demand? What, what do you estimate to be the total addressable market here? I've seen some estimates as high as $100 billion um, in sales by 2030. I mean, does that sound right to you? You can absolutely put us in that camp of we've forecasted $100 billion for the obesity market by 2033, so within the next decade from this year. And we think that's just a matter of new drugs coming on the market from Novo and Lilly. Of course, other competitors will eventually make it to market. And then expanding both within the U.S. and globally as companies launch outside of uh, the U.S. market. We've seen a lot of uh, pharmaceutical deal making, even in this time of year, which traditionally hasn't seen too much in the way of announced deals. Um, Scott Gottlieb put it on Twitter yesterday by saying uh, he thinks it's in spaces where there are natural barriers to entry, often owning or owing to formulation, manufacturing complexity. That may not be coincidence. We'll see a bid put under these kinds of platforms as patents are eroded by policy mistakes. Do you see that continuing to be a key driver of m and uh, if so, if not, what do you think will be uh, a catalyst for additional deal making? Well, that's a great question. And I would say sort of, uh, you know, this diabetes and obesity space, we get asked all the time, why are Novo and Lilly so far ahead? And I think just the rest of the field, due to a number of factors, was underinvested in this space. Obesity just has been a graveyard for development for a number of years. So now you have Lilly and Novo out in front, but this is going to be such a big market that a company really can't be out of it completely. So that's why we've seen companies like Roche, like it AstraZeneca, just, that just buy seems, their way in. It's baffling, though. Like, if you look at the obesity crisis in the United States alone, the fact that anybody could think that that should be a graveyard in terms of pharmaceutical development is jaw-dropping. And then in, in the meantime, I know you're looking to see more data on than how these drugs have an influence on sleep apnea or uh, liver fibrosis or chronic kidney disease. So that, in other words, if you're solving an obesity problem, there is effects on other health outcomes as well. Yeah, exactly. That That's the key to why we think this market is going to be so big, because both companies are producing data to show these aren't just vanity drugs. They are going to help with so many health-related conditions. Novo had data earlier this year showing a 20 percent reduction in a high-risk population of having a heart attack or a stroke. And we think data just like that, sleep apnea, liver disease, kidney disease, this is all coming in 2024 that's going to build this notion that em you can pay for these drugs and get a return. Emily, I've seen a report that people who have critical conditions that require some of the drugs using these weight loss drugs cannot get those drugs. Um, is there any danger of a regulatory or a move by government that would stop some of this use of the drug for, I guess, what you might call um, uh, 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 think voluntary reasons rather than those uh, and provide and get those drugs available to people who need them for critical conditions? Yeah, we have seen that, particularly in the drugs that are meant for type 2 diabetics. You know, Novo right. and Lilly both work very, very closely with the regulators to ensure that the right patients are getting the drugs. And we think we're going to continue to see that evolve just as supply comes online. But, you know, the companies are certainly playing ball and have very good relationships with the regulators. So we don't see any regulatory risk to either of these companies. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like that will be a key story uh, to watch for in 2024. Thank you, Emily.